good to see you. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm fine, thanks, Guido. How are you? Yeah, not too bad. A bit fed up with all these uh, restrictions and everything, but hey, we got to live through it. Awful, Tim, isn't it? Awful. Tim, Tim, yeah. you, um, I hear you, you worked out six ways of um, doing missions, of um, being involved in missions without actually going to Mongolia or to Bolivia or Timbuktu or whatever. Just want to hear more about it. Okay, well, yeah, we've we've uh, we've done some uh, looking into ways that people can get involved in mission uh, without physically getting on a plane because that's not really possible at the moment. Um, um, maybe should I just run through the six yeah. ways? Yes, yeah, so that'd be good. Okay. Uh, start with the first, and then we see how it goes. If you are not coherent as you often are not, then I can just ask him another question. Fine. Okay. <laughs> so what's the first well, one? The first one is um, to learn and to learn about the world. What do you mean? So go for geography lessons again? No, not so much geography, not the sort of physical world, but to learn about the world as the creation, as God created it for a purpose. And that purpose is to bring glory to God. And how much lots of people out there still need to know about Jesus. How, how many are they? Where are they? So where, sort of, do you, where do you start? Where do you start learning? Well, there's lots of things you can do. I always recommend people should read a book, buy a missionary. That's always a good start. I've got a great one here called okay. Ultimate Grace. And uh, Levi is a friend of mine and he plays Frisbee in Japan for a living. And that's what he does to reach other Frisbee players with the gospel. I can send anyone a copy of that for free if they'd like it. Um, yeah, royalties for that. <laughs> and and the other way is to go on some sort of mission information course and one of the best ones at the moment is called momentum yes momentum yes and it's an uh, american course that is run over a series of uh, evenings and you just log in and watch a set and then you can answer questions people and ask questions about what mission is and why it's still needed in today's world so it's learning all about missions and how to go about it. Yeah, and why there is still a need. I've heard people say to me, you know, well, we've got the internet. We don't need to do mission anymore. Surely people can just find out about the Lord on, online. Thank you. That's, that's helpful. So, okay, let's start with learnings. What's the next one? So the next one is praying. And I know everybody says, oh, no, my prayer life was. Well, believe me, I mean everybody every christian i've ever met feels they should pray more and so that's fine just just pray find a people group or a country or even another religion that you feel the lord wants you to pray for and find out about it and pray for it so there are great resources out there operation world which is online is one of the best it's uh, uh, a great summary of the state of christianity in each nation of the world and how people can pray for it and again, you might feel, well, I really feel interested in the Buddhist world or I really feel interested in Japan because maybe I used to play Tamagotchi as a kid. So, you know, I really got Japan on my heart. You can find out about mission in Japan. You can find out about mission to Buddhists. How, what is the Buddhist worldview? Mm. So that sort of thing. OK, yeah. So what comes next? So the next one is to inspire other people. So once you've learned about mission and you've prayed about mission, then maybe you should inspire someone else. Give me an example. Well, maybe you're uh, in a church that, and you're in, involved in the youth group. Uh, as a leader, you could tell the young people in the youth group that there is a, a certain people group in this certain country that has no known believers in Christ or there's a place in the world that nobody's ever been with the gospel and there are people there that need to hear it. So there's things you can do to inspire others. Yeah, so it's, it's really influencing other formations, letting them know about the need and showing them a place in it. Exactly. Everyone has a place in God's mission. We're all designed by a creator whose passion is to tell other people about his love. And we have that job to do. Yeah. So we got learn, pray, inspire. What's the next one on your list? Then? 
Well, the next one is the one we can't do at the moment, which is to go. And uh, some people are still applying to missions with a view to going maybe later after the lockdown, but going is still very much an option. So you said before you can't do it all over the internet. Why is that then? No. Well, in, in some ways, the personal relationship is often the key to bringing people to Christ. So they say that in, a, in Thailand, a Buddhist in Thailand will need to, to be in constant or regular meetings with Christians for five years before they have a full understanding of the faith. And that's just to sort of dig down through all the layers of Buddhist theology and Buddhist spirituality to get to the heart. And they have to trust you. And trust is very difficult to build unless you meet people face to face. So you still got to go. So that's still a uh, requirement. Some people still have still got to go. Yeah. What's what's next then after go? So the next one is to welcome people, and as we all have uh, lots of um, opportunity to meet people either online or in person who are from other countries. Well, so if who you, come, you who come to the UK, who come to, yeah. come to the UK, lots of students. Um, we have ministry uh, with people from lots of different countries here in the UK and some of it is from missionaries who've lived in those countries, learnt the culture, learnt the language, come back and they still want to reach say Japanese or Chinese, so they do it in the UK. How do you go about it? Let's say uh, about students, how do you go about it? I mean you can't just walk into a university campus, can you? Well, there are lots of organisations, but the, one of the biggest ones is uh, Friends International. Um, my wife works for them and uh, they're lovely people who really want to take the gospel to those who have never heard it. And they come to the UK and they're open. Oh, maybe they want to go to church to find out what this building is or they want to go to church to find out what Christianity is just out of interest. And they can be influenced for Christ. And uh, it, the important thing with that ministry is that they get supported when they go back to their country. And we also have ways of doing that with our friends that are still out in the other countries of the world. So I, I can't remember the numbers, but there are hundreds of thousands of students from other countries in the UK at any one time. Mm, yes, I, I know from Guildford University, there were 6,000 foreign students last year. This year, it's down a bit because of, um, of the, the pandemic. But I'm yeah, it's, it's, I can certainly um, confirm. It, it, it's an opportunity. The world is coming to us. Mm. Mm. Yeah, but that doesn't negate the going, does it? No, and the reason for that is that the people that come to the UK tend to be from the higher echelons of society and, and many tribal people groups in places like Papua New Guinea and um, uh, Indonesia and the Philippines have no chance really of coming to the UK to hear the gospel. So there is still a need to go there. And there are lots of countries that you would think you can't go to because they're um, not allowing people in, but you can go to them if you okay. if you know the way. We reached number five, what's number six then? So the last one is to send people. And this is often uh, the most important thing that anyone can do to actually engage with an individual who's going on mission and is preparing and is going to Bible college or they're working in um, a job where they can get experience working with internationals like we mentioned Friends International and, uh, and to support them in prayer and to support them in um, uh, all their needs when they get overseas as well because it isn't uh, it's a free option there's all sorts of uh, preparation that needs to be undertaken so Tim that, that was very helpful do you, do you have a final word you know something that um, summarizes mission I don't want to see people not have the opportunity to know about Jesus in this life and I don't want people to go to a Christless eternity. So I think mission has to be at the top of our agenda to engage with God's plan to see all the nations come to him in the end.